Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Nick Hendel, who is the Vice President for Solution Engineering APJ for Sitecore. So welcome to the jam, Nick. Thank you very much, Nick. Nice to meet you. No worries at all. So um, I talked to your colleague, Mark Johnson, about composable commerce earlier this week. So could you tell me what is meant by the word composable in a broad sense for Sitecore? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, for Sitecore, we've of course been in the business of, of uh, digital experience platforms for a long time. And the composable part is really um, the story around making sure that we can deliver solutions that fit into a customer's architecture, really around all the solutions that they use. And the composable bit really is that every vendor out there is realizing or has realized that there's not a one product fits all solution. So the composable bit is really making sure that the, the solutions that we offer fit into that full architecture stack that a customer needs these days. It's not a one product solution. It's not a two product solution anymore. It's probably a five to 10 product solution. And the composable bit is really making sure that the, the solutions that we offer play nice with all the other products that are out there. Uh, and then we can deliver a solution, what I would, pretty much call, when we say composable, it is a best of breed or it's a point solution that delivers that specific functionality the customer is asking for in a specific segment, be that content management, be that analytics, be that optimization or be that something else. And that is really where the composable comes in. We can go in and deliver one, two, three, five solutions in that composable space, but they are all playing nice with of course, the site core solutions, but also with the other marketing solutions that uh, a customer would be looking for. Right, brilliant. Um, so recently there's been a move towards uh, composable digital experience systems. So can you tell me what is driving this move that's been happening recently? Yeah, it, it's interesting. And, and having been in the space for a bit, of course, that the biggest move is probably the, the, the want to go to SaaS. So a lot of companies have, of course, already gone to SaaS on other platforms, be that on the email marketing or on the CRM, which is probably the most recognized ones from a SaaS perspective. Digital experience platforms have actually been a little bit late to the, to the game, I would say, uh, including Sitecore. So the composable move is first to make sure that the solutions that a company chooses are preferably SaaS-based. But there's also a technology move that's happened behind the scenes, really, which has enabled this. And, and the, the guiding principle there really is that Headless has become such a technical solution approach to how to deliver experiences across channels. And that's become possible in the last five years, let's say. And that is really the other side of the coin from a solution perspective in that where we came from, from the classic web content management vendors. It was all done server side, really. It was all rendered and, and pre-done by the server and then delivered to, uh, to, the, to the customer from a, an experience perspective, most likely a web channel. But with the explosion of channels uh, and with Headless as a solution, you can now start to atomize those solutions. And that's why the composable DXP really is a game changer because it can all be delivered SaaS. The customer can then compose uh, and, and merge all those products together into the experience that they want across all the channels uh, that is relevant for them. Right, yeah. Um, so a lot of organizations have already invested heavily in monolithic systems. So what advice would you give these organizations? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And we, of course, have a lot of customers that have, that have invested in, in the monolithic solutions as well. The first thing I say is that first, just verify whether or not it might actually be the right solution that you're in. I don't think the monolithic systems and certainly the cycle ones are not going away. And there are benefits to the monolith uh, in the sense that the, the whole idea behind it was a solution that does a lot across of different technologies, be that of course CMS, be that email marketing, be that analytics, be that personalization, be that analytic, uh, be that um, uh, person, uh, sorry, um, testing uh, and, and doing A-B testing and stuff like that. But so then it might actually still be the right solution. So first I would actually tell customers, just verify whether or not you really need to move. Now, if the choice is then to move that you really wanna say, no, we are ready to uh, use a different technology because of X, Y, Z, then I would look at what that monolith has been doing for you as from a customer perspective. Has it just been delivering the web experience from a website perspective? Are you really using the analytics that comes with the platform? Are you using the email marketing platform and so on and so forth? and then break those down into, from a composable perspective to say, okay, well, the first thing we should probably look at is 
a new solution to host our content uh, and actually take that fully away from the channels that we need it on and then just look at potentially a headless CMS or from a site core perspective, a content hub perspective and say, now we create content uh, detached from the channels and that's one solution that we need. And then we need this other point solution to take care of this bit and another point solution to take care of this bit. So instead of going out and finding another monolith, it's really breaking down the jobs that that monolith have been doing and then start to look again at those best of breed point solutions to make sure that we then can go out from a business perspective and say, well, these are the requirements very isolated to this specific function, what we want to achieve and then go out and find that solution. Right, yeah, cool. Um, I've got one more question for you, Nick. Um, if an enterprise end user wanted to engage with Sitecore, what is the best way to do so? Yeah, it's uh, uh, I'm, I'm, it's a little bit uh, it's dangerous territory for me because I've never worked client side. So it's always been interesting to the, the whole process of how do customers get across a solution or how do they get to uh, experience a vendor and what they do. And, and the barrier of entry, I think, is actually pretty high in software, be that both enterprise and non-enterprise, really, is that if you go to any software vendor's website, there's really two ways of engaging. One is request a demo, and the other one is potentially to create a free-ish account or whatever. But there's still pretty high barriers of entry is what I see, because if you just wanted to do research at an early stage, you don't really want to book a demo because it's not like you want to give details about your business so we can demo and all that stuff. So one of my initiatives that I've done for my team is, is to work on a concept that we call Sitecore 300 seconds. Um, and if people are interested, they can search for it. And it is basically a concept of taking our product and make it very digestible in video format uh, to say, we can give you a quick intro, the 300 seconds, basically five minutes, an overview of part of the product, uh, be that across content management or uh, CDP or whatever that may be. Uh, an easy digestible version and then a longer version where we dig into the actual features and functions from a demo perspective and actually showcasing the product. And then from that stage on, of course, that's where we get into the more standard stuff when someone is researching. That's where you would reach out, uh, again, request a demo or contact Sitecore from a local office perspective to then get to that next level. But that early research is something that I'm spending a lot of time on to make sure that we can cater for that because there's a lot of vendors out there. There's a lot of pre-work that happens within a business before you get to the stage of actually going out to vendors and talking about, well, we've got these problems. How can you solve them for us? Brilliant. Cool. Um, well, yeah, that's it for today's interview, but thank you for joining me today, Nick. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it.